Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we kick off the trading day in about 24 minutes. And it's Jobs Friday, folks, and quite a jobs number to the upside. Pretty healthy economy still. But what does that mean? That means the Fed might have to bring it with some more rate hikes. We have yield spiking. We have markets pulling back. We'll jump into all of it. We kick things off with the S&P. We were above 3,900, barely coming into that report at 8.30 this morning. S&P spiked down about 35 points, almost a full percent. When you go from where we were trading at, just coming into that number with the high of 3,904, you trade down to a spike low at 8.45 of 30. 868. So what is that exactly? 36 points, almost a full percent. Since then, we're bouncing a bit. You take a look at this chart just over the last five days, Tuesday's low, we're still about 140 points higher from Thursday's low, folks. We'll keep that in mind. That was also, uh, excuse me, Tuesday's low, also last Thursday's low. The lows on this chart, we're just off the highs of where we were yesterday. And all things considered, it's great to have a healthy economy, but not where we're going to get a CPI number next week that you might get a nine handle on. Think about that, folks. We are gaining more jobs than the market is thinking that we are going to gain. OK, there was a revision. We're going to get into numbers in a second. But just generally trying to capture this market in my own mind, we have CPI numbers that are about to come out on Thursday in six days from right now. Those CPI numbers, I think the headline number they're looking for is like 8.8 percent. Very reasonable that we could get a nine percent print on CPI numbers, and at the same time, we're adding 300,000 plus jobs, exceeding expectations. The Fed is gonna look at that and say, this is not the impact that will have the effect that we are looking for by raising interest rates, at least for the time being, we're gonna have to keep our foot on the pedals. 75 basis points, I think, is what will come next. Uh, we'll see how we get that CPI number. That's what will decide things. But man, if that number comes in hot, and this number is still ripping with gaining jobs in 300,000 plus exceeding expectations, I imagine that they are on course. And that's what you're seeing right now in a reaction in this market as well. It's a pretty messed up time to be trading. It's been this way for a long time. That when you get indications of a healthy economy, it's actually bad for the stock market because that means that the Fed is going to do X, right? Um, for the longest time, if you got some bad jobs numbers, that meant the Fed was going to have to ease things. The market like that idea. You get bad jobs numbers, the market goes up. On this date, we get good jobs numbers. They exceed expectations. What happens? The market goes down. Pay attention to that, folks, because it's all about the Fed right now. And we're going to kick off the market update with the 10-year. There's a pullback for you, man. We are off three points from where you were trading at just on Wednesday. These moves not normally happening, folks. Absolutely remarkable moves in the market. Uh, jumping back to that chart. So you got the 10-year was up to 120.16. We're back to 117.23. We have a pretty decent inversion going on right now on the yield curve. On the 10-year right now, we're talking about a yield of 3.08%. Uh, I will pull up. Let's see. What, let's see what the, the percentages are right now. That's what I was pulling up for the actual yields on the two-year, the 10-year. So we got about a five basis point. Is that right? Let's zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. We're talking about a two-year yield right now of 3.12%. You're up eight basis points. And we got the 10-year at 3.08%. So about four basis points. Um, both of them up pretty similarly. But you can see the two-year actually up almost eight basis points. The 10-year up just shy of seven basis points. So the, the inversion expanding just a bit on the two-year 10-year. Something to keep your eye on for sure. Okay, let's jump over to... The numbers, and we get 372,000 jobs added in June, in line with the prior month's pace. But, man, I think the market was looking for about 250. Let's see if they say it down here. Uh, okay, we'll pull it up. Pretty sure. Estimate 265. Okay, two, I saw 250, I believe, earlier. 265. There was a revision of 72,000, I think I saw, to the downside on prior months. Let's see where they got that as well. Nonetheless, you beat expectations. Unemployment rate, 3.6%, folks. That number hits at 8.30 this morning. Markets pull back pretty immediately. Jumping into some of the intricacies, okay, of that number. This is just the Bloomberg Live feed. They have some cool data as they take a look at some of what was happening there. Wages are cooling somewhat. That could be beneficial. 5.1% growth in wages is still inconsistent with the 2% target. Now, they don't have the chart up there, but somehow that just aired out. But wages are cooling to some degree. 
let's see, there were a couple other charts that jumped out at me here. So you got 73 basis points now up from 71 priced in for the July FOMC after that strong headline. Yeah, I mean, this is this is this says it all. Not even Dan Suzuki, deputy chief investment officer at Richard Bernstein. It's hard to argue we're in a true recession when jobs are still growing at this pace. I would agree with that. That doesn't say it all. That is going to say, but that just means the Fed is going to have to bring it, folks. We'll see what CPI comes out, because now the CPI number becomes even more important. Because if you still have a strong CPI, then you're really in trouble. I mean, the whole goal is to bring down inflation and have a strong jobs market. If the CPI starts coming down and you have jobs still being gained, the Fed's going to be cool with that. But if the CPI does not come down and you have jobs being gained by 350,000, you have unemployment sitting at 3.6%, you have almost two jobs open for every unemployed person in the country, that will cause them to continue the restrictive policy that they are in. Uh, in terms of hiking. So right now, we are 524,000. That is total payrolls below pre-pandemic levels. Uh, unless there's a big change in the coming months, that should be wiped out by the end of August. So come September, we may well see a record number for total payrolls. Um, yeah, I'm sure that will get political as we go out there. But back to that same number, above the pre-pandemic levels, even though you have people out of the workforce during that time, now, we had some of the different sectors. Here we go. So health sector, very good sign. You had 78,000 jobs gained last month, biggest jump since February. Uh, that industry, yeah, very, very difficult, folks. Um, many, many workers, of course, over the last two and a half years. I'll tell you, those healthcare workers, man, they deserve more everything in the last two and a half years, what they've had to deal with. You have women. Participation rate with women in their prime working years also took a hit last month. Despite the biggest increase in child care jobs since September, this is your child care jobs. In terms of where you are, you can see, still see well below. The overall level of workers in the sector remain significantly below pre-pandemic level um, period. Interesting how there's so many differences across different sectors. It's why you're seeing so many imbalances, right? That is part of the problem with inflation right now. We're about 500,000 jobs within being at pre-pandemic levels. Meanwhile, you have childcare jobs way under that level. You have healthcare jobs still under that level by pretty dramatic fashion. Now, you have a 15,000 gain in retail. This is interesting because you had a 44,000 drop in May Okay, these are the June numbers. So you have a 15,000 gain in retail could be a good sign that maybe those companies turning things around. That's the analysis here. I would agree with it, though. They have tons of inventory. If they were really going to be in trouble, folks, you wouldn't see a, a gain there in the retail sector in June, probably. Maybe they have plans to weather a short-term um, bout of excess inventory and turn that around. All right, that was pretty much it I had pulled up here. And there's where I got the almost two number. For every unemployed worker, there are 1.9 open jobs. Um, still an unhealthy labor market. Much more work for the Fed to do to correct that imbalance. There's lots of contradictory factors when you look at this market, folks. But the bottom line is the Fed is going to be hiking until they get inflation under control. And right now, inflation's raging and the economy is very strong. So that means the Fed can bring it. And that's what the market's trying to figure out this morning. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. It's going to be an interesting Friday coming in. Next week, we get CPI data. S&Ps right now, you're negative by 16 points. We're right at near 3,900. All things considered, not that bad considering where we are. With you're talking about inflation, you're talking about a Fed that is hiking, a Fed that basically has the market factored in right now of a 75 basis point hike again in their next meeting. Uh, a couple other data points out from the jobs number this morning. Just looking at a couple tweets some of my friends were sharing. Essentially, a full round trip for permanent job losses and temporary layoffs. So you take a look at it, a full reversal of where we went, man. You have the number of unemployed on temporary layoffs surging during COVID, of course. That number basically back to where you were prior to COVID. And the unemployment permanent job losers up from uh, dramatic levels basically back to there as well. And it would make sense when you're about 500,000 jobs within pre-pandemic levels. All of those things kind of coming back to where they were prior to the pandemic. Jumping over to one last data point before we jump away to some of the other stories we got up for the day. Not only is the job number fantastic for are we in a recession, it's great for basically any month period to put how good, and we've just be, kind of become used to some of these numbers, all right? You got to keep some of these numbers in context because this is what the Fed's going to be looking at too, okay? The Fed today is saying, man, this economy is just still pretty hot, even though we're jacking rates up, even though we got the 10-year up to above 3%, even though we got mortgage rates pushing 6%, housing market's still hot, jobs market's still hot. To put how good 372 is in context, it's higher as a percent of employment than 79% of monthly jobs numbers since 1980. You take a look at that chart in terms of where we are, it's a very healthy jobs number, folks. We got an unemployment of 3.6%. Um, and so CPI, man, keep your eye on it because the Fed would love to have a strong economy, but you can't have a strong economy when you have inflation raging at eight or nine percent. That's going to be the problem. If that persists, the Fed will persist, especially no matter what happens to the market. And yeah, at some point, the market will matter. OK, but if we got numbers coming out like this. The Fed's mandate is full employment, folks. The Fed's mandate is not S&P 500 or 5000. The Fed's mandate is full employment. We got almost 400,000 jobs a month right now with unemployment at 3.6%, and we have job openings that are almost two open jobs for every unemployed American. You got to consider that when you look at the CPI number, man. Pay attention, because if this CPI number is hot, the market's basically already reacting to it in terms of what yields are doing. Um, but yeah, that's the case. And I think it's pretty clear if you take a look at it. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to keep track of everything going on in terms of the rhetoric out there. Inflation is still raging, folks, okay? And the economy doing this well gives the Fed the room to keep hiking until they tame inflation. 
All right, let's jump around and see what else we got going on. A couple stories for the car industry. Ford reports worst quarterly sales in China since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic. Jump over to Ford shares Tesla on the flip side of that. <clears throat> Ford down a bit, but that's just basically with the market. 11.58 from 11.72 was a high last night. And Tesla on the flip side of that. China shipments soared a record as plant fires back up. The EV, EV makers' domestic deliveries were unprecedented, almost 78,000 units. Overall, car sales in China in June rose 22% to 1.97 million. Uh, monthly ships in China vehicles rebounded to a record in June, a stunning recovery after they lifted those restrictions. Yeah, so they delivered um, 79,000 of them, well over the 33,155 in the same period a year ago. Yeah, and that's basically all of them going to local market, domestic. So monthly deliveries from China sunk to as low as 1,512 units in April and zero exports as Shanghai's week-long punitive lockdown forced the company to suspend production. Um, so it looks like they've kind of got back on the train there in China. And I imagine that they may not be shutting things down as quickly next time in China as they try and weather this because it was a pretty severe damage. But you don't know what's going on in China, man. They don't have the vaccines we do. And that zero po COVID policy really setting them back. Tesla this morning going to open down about eight bucks. Let's jump around to some of the other FANG stocks this morning. Amazon, quite a run yesterday. I think it was up about 1.75% to 116.99. You're back a bit today. Meta had a decent run as well. They've backed off a bit to about 170. Google shares this morning, 23.57. We jump to Tesla, I said 725, and let's jump to Twitter, because Twitter looks like that deal may be in peril, although you're getting a little bit of a lift this morning. This is going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out, folks. Um, just from like a legal standpoint, so from what I understand, and in the Tigers then, please enlighten me if I'm wrong, man, because it gets intricate here. Um, the deal can fall through, but legality wise the deal isn't supposed to be able to fall through if elon just says i don't like the deal that i made with you i'm going to change it now um he had to what get financing there were things that needed to be done but i'm pretty sure that he just didn't have the option like you would to say nah i don't like the deal we made i'm going to come back which is pretty much what's happening i think any reasonable person would be able to figure that out uh one of the biggest reasons that elon was going after twitter was because the thing had so many bots Right. Well, now the problem is it's got too many bots. But either way, story out there last night saying that it's um, it may not go through. You got some real problems out there. Not surprising. Drops from 39 to 36. See, seems to be the case that Elon wants all the data to verify, quote unquote, bots. But something to keep in mind, folks. I wouldn't give Elon that data if I was Twitter. OK, because who says that he buys the company? Right. I mean, that's the problem. OK. Um, who knows what his real motive is there and to relinquish all that private data in some way when he does not follow the rules, man, no matter what you do. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in the courts. Uh, and yeah, in this in this market, he would probably be right to try and renegotiate that deal. We're going to see how it plays out. Nonetheless, Twitter down this morning. But man, you think about it. You're only down a buck thirty for some context here. Right, you back things up just on a daily. Like, what was it? When when did the when did the news first break that Elon was buying a position? I think maybe it was at this point here, back in March, March seventeenth, possibly. We'll have to figure it out. Or was it this break here? Or was it this break? I'll pull it up the exact date if anybody has in the den. Um, you traded thirty eight seventy nine, well off the price that you'd pay for it. And there's no way, folks, that that deal is going through at the $44 billion price, whatever they negotiate it. Maybe they do a renegotiation to avoid the, the battle and the, and the potential payout that they may have to go through. But, yeah, they're saying it's about bots, and obviously that's something that was considered going into that deal. All right, let's see what else I got pulled up here in terms of articles. Bank of America talking about potential people dumping uh, stocks on recession. Bond funds see biggest inflows in 14 weeks. Strategists see range-bound S&P 500 before further declines. So nearly $63 billion flowed into cash in the week through July 6th, while global equity funds had redemptions of $4.6 billion. 
That's Bank of America. Stock funds still saw their second week of additions, while global funds had their biggest inflows in 14 weeks at $2.4 billion. Check out that number, $63 billion flowing into cash in the week through July 6th. That is a number, man. They're looking for range-bound trading, huh? 3,800 to 4,200 this summer. <sighs> I think we'd all love a 4,200 range-bound trade, man, in this in this market right now. 3,800. 3,800 is the, the, the low of the range. Shoot, we were there this week, man. We were below it on Tuesday. 3,800. I think that's an optimistic range. Doesn't mean it can't play out, but we will see. All right, folks, we're going to get the open. We'll see what the market has to say when we come back in three minutes. Stay tuned. S&P is negative by 19. I'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk party, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now, and you have an S&P barely in the red when you look at where we are right now, negative by just 13 points, trading at 38.91. Uh, not that long ago, folks. You back it up to, as I've been talking about, July 1st, 37.40. You're solid almost 150 points off that level. And, man, you look where we were on June 17th, right? Just three weeks ago, ago on that low, 
I mean, it's tough to overstate. 250 S&P points from that price level alone, folks. 38.88 right now. You got the NASDAQ 100. You're back a bit. You're back a full percent in growth stocks off 127 points, just above 12,000. The Dow off only two tenths percent. Russell off four tenths percent. Bitcoin, 21,270. Uh, Bitcoin, pretty interesting. This is the battle line, right? You back things up as far as you go when futures go active December of 2017. There's your blue line. You can see pretty critical area for Bitcoin. You go below there. Where's your next stop? 10,000? Maybe it's maybe it's 14,000, which was the high you back in, in June of 2019. Uh, but Bitcoin finding a bit of a bid near about 20,000. Back to a shorter term time frame. You jump over to crude. Quite the acceleration. Crude just got above the highs you had yesterday. You're at 104.37. You're $9, almost $10 off of the lows we had just Wednesday. That crude market uh, not going away just yet. Gold, tough week for gold. Gold down at 1739, flat on the session right now. And you jump to notes and bonds. A little bit of a reversal of the action, but you got the 10 year right now, negative by 12 ticks, 117, 28, the 30 year, negative by almost a full point, 28 ticks, 137.17. You jump over the VIX. Pretty interesting action, man. The VIX. It's been some tame action in this VIX. I was reading an article yesterday that talked about people who have been buying the VIX for hedges. Even on the acceleration down, you haven't really got the reward, especially for the market corners that you've seen a couple of these, probably because the VIX hasn't been below 20 many times throughout the year. So even when you get some spikes, folks, the VIX of 20 is already calculating in some pretty decent spikes. We're trading right now at 26.08. When you think about it, the lows of February were 1845. So you have not been below 1845 in the VIX since the first couple weeks of the year. And even then, most of the time that we've been spending is above 24. Absolute huge volatility priced into the market and probably rightfully so for the moves that we're getting. All right, let's jump down the line for some of the equities that are moving right now. Levi. They reported better than expected sales and profit for its latest quarter, helped by higher prices and strong demand for its denim offerings. They raised the quarterly dividend by 20%. You jump over to Levi shares. We'll put it back on a short-term time frame. They were a bit higher. They've traded off a bit. But, man, check out that chart, right? Let's back this up a little bit first before we do. You talk about a pullback, man. Back to almost COVID lows from $30.84. That's a one-way trip, man. Maybe this is the turnaround, but all I'll say is let's put it on a daily real quick before I do this. I mean, that's close. You're still not quite breaking out. If you take this trend line, right? Now, where's that line up? You could have the first trend line taking place here, and maybe that's the bounce that it got at that low of 1562. Bounce it a couple times. The other side you can take that from is right here, though, in which case... Those tops, you're bumping right up against that level. So maybe you look for a little bit more of an acceleration for Levi because they were higher. They give it up a bit. You were at 1750. You're at 1702. Their earnings after the bell last night. GameStop. So let's see how they're trading. Uh, they fired their CFO and told employees in an internal memo that it's cutting staff as it tries to turn around its business model. GameStop, the original Reddit favorite, uh, trades lower after the close last night, but you're down about 6.1% today. You take a look at a longer-term time frame on this chart. That's pretty cool. So I had that one on there for a while. Let's put it on the daily going back three years or five years. Line it up there. Yeah, so all you're doing is bumping up against that trend line. Check that out, right? You go back to the highs of June of 2021. What is that high in GameStop then? 344. You touch the high in November of last year. That correlates to where you were approximately at the end of March of this year and also where you are in June. June and July. You're still at 127 bucks, folks. You want a wake-up call? What's this stock worth? Could be $2. Could be $15. Could be $25. $127? Anything's possible. The market's never wrong is one way to look at it. It's valued at about $10 billion right now. Um, but look how long this thing was chopping around at 10 15 Tough to remember since uh, it's been a fan favorite up to 483 Let's see if that line extends up how it goes left. Whoops. Oh, jeez. Yeah, not quite. Blows right through that top high. But nonetheless, you can see going from the recent highs, that's a critical area that we're at in GameStop. They're down 6.1% when they have their CFO getting fired. So we know Twitter's lower. Ah, Spirit, this one, the, the saga continues. So they've pushed back 
um, a special a special shareholder meeting to vote on its planned merger with Frontier until July 15th, so one week back again. The postponement comes as Spear continues talks with both Frontier and rival suitor JetBlue. So the market likes that because the bottom line is JetBlue is willing to pay like a billion dollars more. So there's Spirit up 2.1%. Now their planned merger is what they call it. ULCC is Frontier. That gets a lift of 2.3%. Spirit's up 2.1% and JetBlue is up 8 tenths percent. All of them up a little bit. It's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out as well. So WD40. Quarterly profit and sales fell short of analyst expectations, impacted by inflationary pressures and a number of global disruptions. Oh, boy, down 10%. Pretty remarkable. This is like a whole company, right? WD40. Uh, a great product. I got some in my garage. I remember they were in almost all garages when you were a kid. What's this company worth? I'm sure they have more than just WD40. $2.4 billion right now. You're down 12%, man. And look at this thing. You're back to right where you were pre-COVID levels. You were up to 333. This thing's doing the same thing. Check out this trend line. Look at this. Right? It's an art, not a science, folks, but sometimes put those things on your charts, man, because there are at least areas you get to take a look at. And as hard as it may be to think that when you're coming back up to this point of 209, and meanwhile, the last time it touched this trend line was at 252, how are you going to dip lower even at that price level? And what's it do, folks? It trades down from 207. Yeah, that's last week, right? This is a weekly? Yeah, check this out. There's your daily. Yeah, all that drop off uh, today down to 180 from 205 as you're approaching that trend line. All right, in terms of what else I had pulled up, there's your GameStop. Yeah, we talked about Ford, the jobs report, Bank of America, Tesla, their five shipments. Yeah, this one's going to be an interesting one on, on a macro scale in some degree. Uh, this is the big takeover at Bloomberg. This article out yesterday, last night, historic cascade of defaults is coming for emerging markets. Number of developing nations trading distressed has doubled with El Salvador, Ghana, Egypt, Tunisia, and Pakistan appearing particularly vulnerable emerging markets. It's going to be a tough one, folks. Uh, that is part of the reason you've seen so much strength in the dollar index. We'll jump over to the dollar index when we get back from the break. Uh, and also, folks, if you haven't checked it out on the front page of TFNN, our man Teddy Kegstad put out an outstanding newsletter. The Tiger Forex Report. This is the second weekly issue. Uh, he just launched that report. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get back. Very important time for Forex. I uh, had a great call in the bond market this week as well. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now, only negative by 77, not 70, seven points, charging back near about 3,900. Quite a resurgent, man. You're up 30 points from where you were at 845 this morning. We've got a lot of green bars. We'll see where the day goes. We're only 12 minutes in the trading day. Jumping around to some of the currencies real quick, Euro, U.S. dollar. We almost got parity, man. $1.00716. Right now, we're up a bit off those levels. This is a five-minute chart on the Euro, U.S. dollar. You take a look at that thing on a daily that is quite a march from February, man. From 114, we're almost at parity. Uh, great time to take a trip in Europe, folks. If you're thinking about it anytime soon, lock in some of that. Uh, one of my best friends lives in Switzerland. One thing he was saying at the time, though, man, is uh, also a great time to jack up prices on tourists over there. If you're doing something especially touristy, be careful of them jacking up those prices because uh, they're aware of what's going on right now. They're aware that the euro U.S. dollar is so low. They're aware that Americans especially getting a bargain over there and that we're used to inflation they were talking about. So interesting dynamics nonetheless. Euro probably on its way to parity is how some have put it. I believe that's what our man Teddy Kegstat was saying just last uh, just Wednesday when we were chatting with him on the program. And folks, as I mentioned, the Tiger Forex report coming over the front page of TFNN. So this special is only running for this month. Okay, Teddy launched his newsletter. He put out the second week, weekly issue this week. Uh, he's already had two updates, folks. He put out a weekly issue, first trading day of the week. This one, it was Tuesday because we were closed on Monday with the July 4th holiday. So you'll get a weekly report. It's a great time to sign up because you get access to the archives he has in there. You'll be signed up for the report that he puts out, the weekly report, on Monday morning. And he put out a report this morning prior to the jobs number. He had a report out yesterday just talking about an update on one of the currencies, I believe. But he had a report yesterday, a report out this morning, a weekly report that started things. It's $97. But right now for this month, folks, you can sign up as an inaugural member, a charter member. You lock in 25% savings for the life of your subscription. Uh, normally $97. That 25% brings you down to $72.75. You lock it in and still you got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so try it out. I uh, encourage you. He had a great call on bonds, talking about potentially we'll jump to that bond market. He covers the 30-year every week in his weekly newsletter. Uh, and, yeah, talking about basically maybe a slight reprieve. We talked to him on Wednesday, man. Let's see what time it was on Wednesday. Look at this. We were talking to Teddy, man, when the 30-year when the was at 141.24. We're a full four plus points below that price level. You say, yeah, uh, I think this is a reprieve. Um, I'm surmising it. You can always go check out the interview, folks, at our YouTube channel. Just search TFNN. All of the interviews, all of the programs we do, we archive them, upload them right there free. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get all the notifications. Um, but yeah, interesting action across the board. And you got to jump to the sad news over in Japan, man. I said to some friends this morning, absolutely horrible news to wake up to. It doesn't get much worse, man. Um, shocking. Shocking, to say the least, as their prime, former prime minister, um, Abe, assassinated uh, 
just a very sad deal for the Japanese people, for him, for his family, uh, his loved ones. Send some prayers, send some white light over to uh, his family, his friends, and all the people in Japan over there mourning uh, today. Just sad story, man. Life is precious, folks. Uh, that's one thing you can always take away from stories like this because, whew, just in an instant. Uh, seemed like a great man and gone. Real bummer. And them, it's, it's like bummer doesn't even do its service, right? Just very, very sad, um, tragic state of affairs, to say the least. All right, what else we got going on? Jump around. Let's jump around to some of the equities. We'll take a look at some of the airlines this morning. Let's do it on the travel sector. Jump back to some of the headlines. You got the S&Ps negative by 10 right now. American, a little bit of a lift. You're up by two tenths percent. I've been seeing some horror stories on social media for some of these travel companies in terms of delays. Delta, up a bit, up nine tenths percent right now. Uh, some of the other equities I want to get to, I think I saw that Warren Buffett bought more Oxy, I think. So Oxy up one percent. You got crude rising right now. CVX, Chevron gives it up a bit. ExxonMobil. They were talking about Chevron yesterday on Fast Market. They did a nice segment. Take a look at this thing, right? Quite a pullback from 182, man. These companies are probably going to be making a lot of money for a long time, folks. Um, you know, doesn't mean you have to buy this thing at 143 right now when it was trading last year at $93. But if you're looking for a longer term position, you're looking for a good dividend play, these stocks are going to be there and they're going to be there for a while. Even, you know, you're not going to see crude back to 60 bucks anytime soon, even if you get a reprieve. I don't know what happens in Russia. I don't know how that gets resolved. If it gets resolved, hopefully it does in some form. But that is going to be a persisting element of risk in that market that is going to be present for some time, to say the least. And there's your chart on crude. We're at 103.84. Jump around to the FANG stocks. Amazon gives back a lot of the gains they had yesterday. Look at that slide. Down more than 1% for Amazon. Let's check out retail because retail added some jobs. But you target down about half a percent. Walmart shares catches a lift. There you go. Up about eight tenths percent for Walmart. Let's see even companies like Nordstrom's down about three tenths percent. Macy's down about five tenths percent. Kohl's has their own deal going on. Whether they're going to get bought out doesn't seem likely right now with everything going on in retail. They're down about six tenths percent. check out the cruise ships as well so carnival no excuse me that's cool yet i was like wait a second there's your action on carnival i would be careful of this one folks if you touch any of these cruise ships be careful uh, i'm not sure i forget who put out the note but somebody put out a note one of the analysts recently saying basically if they face any more demand shocks in any capacity they're probably going bk because of the number of debt uh, the gross just debt that they have on their books that they've had to incur during COVID. I mean, look at that downtrend. You actually broke out of that downtrend, folks, okay? And that's a downtrend, remarkably, that stems from prior to COVID. Isn't that cool? Look at that chart, All right? Carnival, let's see how far back it goes. Yeah, right from the highs, man. So 7270 is the high in January of 2018, I'm going to put this back to a five-year weekly. There's your high. Yeah, you get a couple highs and lows, but look at how it just exacerbates the sell-off during COVID. Where do you trade to, folks? You trade right back up to the upper boundary of the trend line that it had been in for the better part of 2018 and 2019, and you just broke out of that trend line to the low side. And what did you do? An ode to our man Bud Rolfs, the channel master, the channel king. You break out of the channel line, folks. That's not when you you're. That's not when the move is confirmed. You let it come back and test the channel line. So what does it do? It trades to a low of 870. You get back up to 1085. You get back up to 1105. You hit that channel line and then you trade lower. You know, if you're willing to take a gamble and you're willing to risk capital that you can wake up one day and maybe that capital is gone on a company like this, maybe 50% of it's gone, right? You don't know when you're dealing with a company that has this level of debt. And, um, you know, the pandemic, I understand, is over in a lot of people's minds, and that is cool, man. Two and a half years later, you know what I mean? But cruise ships is a special element, man. I'm living my life. I'm doing whatever I want to do. Um, but I'm not sure I'm going on a cruise ship just yet with two kids, young kids. Uh, I'm still aware that there's some germs out there that I don't want, and cruise ships, they might have a little bit of a problem, man. Uh, this wasn't supposed to be the kind of over, you know? 
cruise ships. Kind of learned all. They're, they're a little bit of a cesspool of germs, man. So not sure they're there yet, quite yet. Carnival down another 2.4. We got the S&Ps down 28. A little bit of a sell-off. Stay tuned, folks. We got about three minutes. I'll be back to finish up the show. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down by 27 points right now. NASDAQ 100, negative by 137, sitting right at about 12,000. NASDAQ 100, you're off about 1.2%. S&Ps are off about three quarters percent. The Dow off about five tenths, half a percent right now. And the Russell off a full percent. Jumping back to one of those tweets I had pulled up, because I got to stress it, folks, okay? This tweet, it's talking about the jobs added, okay, uh, versus months since 1980. Where we are right now, Okay, is the number of about 372,000. And what this is, is as a percent of total employment. Okay, because it wouldn't be fair to compare it, compare it to the 1980s, because just population growth alone, adding 372,000, is not as impressive as it may have been back then. What is impressive is when you compare it to uh, as a percent of total employment in terms of the numbers. The one thing I want to stress, folks, is look at the numbers in prior recessions, okay? We're not there yet. Look at what happened in 2000. Look at what happened in 2008. Look at the fall-offs that we've seen, 
okay? We are very high on the totem pole right now in terms of monthly jobs added at a time when we're going to get a CPI on Thursday. I talked a lot about this at the beginning of the program. If you weren't here when we started things off, though, we have a very hot jobs market and we have a CPI out Thursday of next week. We could get a 9% print. You know, it's easy to think, okay, the market's pulled back 900 points, almost 1,000 points. Here we go. Maybe we're going to lift higher. These type of charts are pretty scary, folks. If inflation persists, this is the disclaimer. Watch those CPI numbers, man. We'll see how they trade. Oil's going to matter. Energy prices are going to matter. But if the CPI prices persist, and this is what our jobs market looks like, the Fed will continue to hike. That's what to pay attention to in this market, folks. S&Ps. They're kind of thinking the same thing right now. Off by 30 points. We were trading at about 3,900 when we came into that number. There's your second sell-off. We just got to the tune of about 30 points to the downside. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next for the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got our man Larry Pesavento at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rhodes at 1, Dave White at 2, and Tom O'Brien. My dad wraps it up live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much for starting the trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Have a great Friday. <laughs>